everybody, Sticks here at the Token Minorities bringing you another deck on Pokemon TCGO and today I have a deck centered around Lugia and Lugia Break from Fates Collide and before I get into the deck, just a reminder that if you like this video or found it helpful, please leave a like, drop a comment, and maybe subscribe. Helps us out a lot and lets us do more for you guys. But like I said, this deck is centered around Lugia Break from Fates Collide with the Flash of Destruction attack hits for a whopping 150 damage for 4 colorless energy and you have to discard 2 energy attached to this Pokemon. So, I mean, it has a drawback, but, I mean, it still hits for an absolute ton of damage. Slap a Muscle Band on there. You're hitting for a whole lot, and that is 170 damage. And Lugia in itself is actually really good with the Pressure ability. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, any damage done by attacks from your opponent's active Pokemon is reduced by 20. So, it's basically just a free Hard Charm in its ability, and it also has Intensifying Burn 60 plus 60 if your opponent's active Pokemon is a Pokemon EX. So Lugia just has two great attacks and a great ability that make it definitely a deck that is worth trying. Now, you might notice that this deck list is very similar to the Genesect EX deck that I made a little while ago, and that is because Lugia and Genesect are very, very similar in that they have attacks that hit for a lot of damage, but you also have to discard cards. And because Lugia attacks for colorless energy, then you can run it with steel. So I basically just applied the same type of strategy with this deck in mind. So I mean, it's very much the same, but it has some slight differences that I will get to. I am running a 4-3 line of Lugia and Lugia Break, really because I mean, Lugia can be a good attacker on its own with the intensifying burn against EX Pokemon. And also, I mean, you want to make sure you have Lugias available to evolve into Lugia Break. So that's why I have a 4-3 line of those. I'm running 2 Shaman for draw support, 2-2 two, two line of Zorua and Zoroark for a backup attacker, a way of rushing in to be able to metal links onto the Lugia after you discard the energy and then retreat into them. And I mean, another way of getting around like Jolteon and Pyroar and stuff like that. One Aegislash, just because, like I said in the Genesect vid video, if you are running a Steel deck, you might as well just throw an Aegislash in there. I mean, one extra Pokemon won't hurt, and Aegislash's potential tech is just too good to pass up. I mean, it completely shuts down decks like Night March and stuff like that. Well, not completely shuts them down, but it forces them to use, like, Hex Maniac or Lysander, and makes them waste their supporter for the turn getting around Aegislash instead of directly attacking it. So Aegislash is just a great steel Pokemon to have just in case. And then a 3-3 line of Bronzor and Bronzong. I said this in the Genesect video and I will say it again. I am going to keep running this Bronzor in these type of decks because of the iron defense. I mean, I know another Bronzong can actually, or Bronzor rather, can actually hit for damage. But if you're forced to attack with a Bronzor, then you are really wanting to stall. I mean, that's what you definitely need to do in that turn. So having the ability to prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn, is definitely the way to go in terms of having a Bronzor in your active spot and being forced to attack with it. And then, of course, we are running the Bronzong with the Metal Link's ability to be able to get those discard, get those energy out of our discard pile and back onto the Lugia. Something worth noting, I initially ran a Bronzong break just as a extra kind of tech because Lugia's attack, while it does hit for 150 damage, it doesn't hit a magic number of like 170 or something like that. I mean, it can with a muscle band, but more often than not, your opponent's Pokemon will be left like with 20 HP left or EXs are left with like 20 HP because of that attack. So therefore, you definitely can use a Bronzong Break just to go for an attack and just clean up your opponent. Um. There was actually one game that I had while testing this deck when I had the Bronzong Break there where I managed to take all six prizes in one turn because I had gotten three Flash of Destructions off with my Lugia and my opponent had three EXs with just like 20 and 30 HP left. So, I mean, it's definitely worth trying, but I much prefer having another Lugia or you can even throw a Bronzong Break in over the Aegislash. This is just the list that I have come up with and I've decided to use. I encourage you to make your own decisions and try things out for yourself. But yeah, this is just the idea that I have as of this moment. On to the items, we are running two Battle Compressor to get the energies and uh, the also some supporters into our discard pile to be used later. We're running only a single level ball. I mean, you can level ball for Zorua and Bronzor, and it's just kind of a nice way of not having to discard energy to get one of those small basic Pokemon out. I am running one Sacred Ash as opposed to Super Rod for the same reason as in the Genesect video, 
because this deck thrives on having energy in the discard pile. The DCEs you can't get back with Super Rod anyway, so you might as well run Sacred Ash to get more Pokemon back in your deck, and then have Bronzong just Metal Link's the energy that you would be able to get back with Super Rod anyway. For Trainer's Mail is to help with the consistency, especially with Steel decks, they tend to get very clunky. Trainer's Mail helps an absolute ton with making sure that you get things out on a consistent basis. For Ultra Ball to get all of our Pokemon out, for VS Seeker to reuse all of our supporters, and then this is the line of supporters that I am generally going to use if like I really if I really can't think of anything more specifically that I need, I'm running a one Lysander because Lysander and then 3-3 three, three of N and Sycamore. This is just a personal line of mine. You can definitely run like an AZ or something like that. But I prefer to have one Lysander and then 3-3 three, three of N and Sycamore. That is something for you to decide for yourself what type of line of supporters you want to run. That's just what I have decided with this deck. You could definitely fit a Giovanni scheme to potentially hit for 190 with Lugia. However, more often than not, I found it I found that I needed the draw support over the 20 damage, so that's why I didn't include a Giovanni scheme in this version of the deck. However, that is something you should definitely try out. We were running two Skyfield, just I mean, play it down. Play down all your Shaman, get down all of your Pokemon that you need. And then when your opponent inevitably counters Skyfield, well, that's a way to get rid of Shaman. I mean, it's really just kind of a one-turn thing to try to explode for the turn and just get everything out and then discard the Shamans that you don't want on your bench. Uh, as for the tools, we are running one Fighting Fury Belt for the Aegislash or potentially a solo Lugia against a EX deck. Uh, two Floatstone for the Zoroark to be able to stand in and retreat, and also you can throw it on anything at any point. Two Muscle Band to power up the Lugia Break, let it hit for more damage. Four DCEs just for Lugia, but Zoroark can use it in a pinch. And then six Metal Energy to be able to get them back with metal links. So I mean that's really the deck and it's uh I mean it's kind of clunky but you can more often than not get what you need and I am done rambling so let's just go ahead and try to find a match with this deck. Alrighty we have found one against a uh, bot 3 L H O I I don't I don't even know how to say it like Bothello maybe? I I don't know. But we do get a call the coin flip. Do we get tails? No we don't so we don't get a start first. That stinks a lot for this deck cuz I mean this deck wants to go first every single time and oh it looks like we do get to go first that's weird given that it's a fighting deck Ooh, we don't start with something that's particularly good but uh hmm do i want to start with a bronzor or a zorua i think i'll let the bronzor take the hit for me yeah definitely and then i'm gonna go ahead and play the zorua down ultra ball get rid of the metal energy and probably the n and then go for a sycamore um, okay, that's even perfect because what I can do is Ultra Ball, get rid of the Metal Energy and the end to grab a Lugia. I definitely could grab a Shaman, but I want to make sure to have a Lugia out. That way I can just get some energy on it and get things going for next turn. Play the energy on, go for a Sycamore, and see what we can do from there. We actually get something that we can really work with. Um, let's just go ahead and Ultra Ball, get rid of the... Uh, Aegislash and the N to grab a Shaman that I'm going to use for next turn because I will be able to evolve every single one of my Pokemon and I'm just going to end the turn right there if my opponent has like a Hex Maniac or something like that he could definitely disrupt us but I have a darn near perfect hand right now I mean my opponent could definitely disrupt us with like an N or something like that but I'm hoping that he will just go for the Karina to get some damage off. I mean, he could also attack the Bronzor because Halucha does have free treat. So if he gets like a strong energy and a muscle band or a strong energy and a fighting fury belt, then he can knock out the Bronzor and he discards the fighting fury belt. That's interesting. I mean, maybe he had, okay, he's going for the max elixir. Maybe he'll even be able to corkscrew smash this turn. And that looks like a definite possibility up oh, we do see the muscle band if we see another energy ugh, he gets to corkscrew smash our bronze or that is very unfortunate but what i will ugh, what's he gonna do get heads he's gonna bring out the what's he gonna bring out brings out the lugia to corkscrew smash that's weird um and then he just sycamores he gets heads on his catcher which was very annoying but at the same time like it gives our bronze or like it gives our Bronzor a second life because it was definitely going to get knocked out at that point. And 
Looks like we will be able to keep our hand, so that is great for us. And we're running a lot of non-EXs in this deck, so that helps even more. Means Halucha isn't going to do anything. So it looks like this is a Carbrink, Car, Carbrink, Carbink Break, and Lucario deck. So, wow, a Muscle Banded Corkscrew Smash does a whopping 40 damage to my Lugia. That is ridiculous. Haha, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, but what I can do is go ahead and play the Bronzong there, go for the Zorark right there, go for the Lugia Break right there, play the Shaman down. Yes, I would like to draw some more cards. Hopefully get a DCE or a Floatstone. Um, that works. Let's just go ahead and stand in with our Zorark. I can go ahead and Ultra Ball, get rid of the... VS Seeker and the Zorark to grab another Lugia. Yes, I think that's what I want to go for. Go ahead and play that down. Put the Fighting Fury Bell on it. I've decided that this will be my lone Lugia. Go ahead and Sycamore just to see what else we can get. We do get a DCE, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and I will actually be able to go for a Flash of Destruction this turn with my Lugia if I want to. So that might very well be what I'm going to go for. So what I think I'm going to go ahead and do is Metal Links, get one energy onto this Lugia. Yeah. And then probably play the DCE onto it as well. Going to go ahead and retreat into this guy and then go for a turn to Flash of Destruction. Or do I want to Intensifying Burn? Um, I will be able to hit for 140 with this and I won't have to discard energy. So actually just to hmm i think i'm gonna go for the flash of destruction no no let's just go for the intensifying burn for now um i can definitely knock out the lucario next turn and i don't think there is necessarily a way he can knock me out and i can also kind of power up a lugia in the back what i could have done is flash of destruction that way i had energy in my discard pile for the bronzong but i didn't think that that was something i necessarily wanted to do at this point in the game um, my opponent would have to discard both energy if he wanted to retreat the Lucario, and even with a strong energy, he would only be able to hit for, I think, 100 damage? Would that be right? 140, yep, and then with the resistance and the pressure, we would, yep, we would actually live this turn even if my opponent does get a strong energy onto the Lucario. So that looks like it's what he's going to go for this turn. That is just fine with me. We are able, we are going to be able to live the turn with this Lugia regardless. I mean, my opponent's only going to be able to hit for 80 damage, and that's actually kind of awesome that Lugia is going to take such little damage from that uh, Lucario. And we even get a Trainer's Mail, so let's see if we can get something to get another Lugia. We do not. That is just fine. What I am going to go ahead and do is, eh, you know what, let's just slap a Muscle Band onto onto Shaman or something like that. And then I can go ahead and Sycamore away the rest of my hand, get a Metal Energy in the discard pile to power up the Lugia on the bench. And I get another, hmm, let's see if I can get an Ultra Ball. Uh, yes, actually that's the first thing I do. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the Trainer's Mail, I think. Let's go ahead and get rid of the Trainer's Mail and the Battle Compressor, I'm, I mean, I'm going to use those at some point, but I don't need them at this point. Grab another Lugia, play this one down, go ahead and Metal Links, yep, get one energy onto, hmm, do I want to, which Lugia do I want to put it on? I think I want to put it on this Lugia, yeah, this Lugia, and then I will go ahead and put the DCE onto it as well, I'm going to go ahead and Skyfield to counter my opponent's fighting stadium, even though that doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to Flash of Destruction. That's overkill, but what I really wanted was to get the energy into the discard pile for when I needed it. An alternate thing I could have done is retreated into the Lugia on the bench and gone for an intensifying burn. That would have knocked him out as well. But I think we are still in a very good position regardless. And my opponent brings out the Halucha. One cool thing, Halucha is knocked out by a... Uh, Fighting Fury Belt boosted by a Fighting Fury Belt boosted Lugia and okay it looks like and my opponent ends us so that is a little unfortunate because we had a Sycamore in our hand but that is just fine um hmm oh we even get something that we can definitely work with gets a Focus Sash onto the Halucha he's probably just going to retreat 
into the Lucario this turn and then go knock out my Lugia Break. But the thing is, Lugia Break is still only a single prize. So I'm still in a fantastic position, I think, because my Lugias have the, my Lugias have, what is it? What do they have? They have type advantage. Um, my opponent will just, yeah. I mean, he hits us for a whole whopping 50 damage. Oh, wow. And then I'm going to go into a Lugia with 160 HP and just start intensifying burning my opponent to where he just can't do anything at all. And I even get another Bronzong. That is just fine. What I'm going to do is Metal Links, put one energy on this Lugia on the bench. Um, I could Sycamore. I'm going to go ahead and see what's all's in my discard pile. That will be getting rid of a VS Seeker. So what I think actually I'm going to do instead is VS Seeker for an N, get my opponent down to a couple less cards. I still will draw four. So I'm in a pretty solid position regardless. And actually that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted a Bronzor to be able to double Metal Links when I get a Lugia Break. And what I can actually, ooh, grab a Lysander for next turn if I need it to knock out the Lucario. And then let's just go for an Intensifying Burn, get some really good damage on the Lucario to where that will be a two hit knockout. Next turn, I can even Lysander it in if I need to. And I'm just in an absolutely phenomenal position with Lugia because of its resistance and its ability to hit EXs. And I mean, this is the exact type of matchup that Lugia shines in. I mean, it's able to take advantage of even, even just regular Lugia is able to take advantage of EXs and hit for some more damage while being a one prize attacker. And hitting for 130 damage in this case, or 150 damage with a flash of destruction, I mean, that's just absolutely ridiculous for a one prize attacker and is why Lugia is so strong in this type of deck. And it looks like my opponent will just go for a Birch's Observations. I guess he doesn't want to end me. That is completely fine. Um, I'm kind of hoping he gets Tails on this. That way he has to go for the, what is a spoon? I, I've seen this bench spoon. Prevent all effects of your opponent's attacks except damage done to, oh, that's just fine. Um, that's, it really is not that big of a deal because I mean, I don't have any real secondary attacks and ooh, there is a Zygarde. You are definitely going to get targeted down by an attack from me at some point. But for the time being, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to hang on to my hand because all four of my VS Seeker are in the discard pile now. So if I go for a Sycamore, I will not have access to a Lysander or anything of the sort. And look at that, a, Del a Fighting Fury Bell with two strong energy attacking a Lugia and it only takes 110 damage. That is absolutely ridiculous. And what I can do right here is just go for a Metal Lynx. I only have one in my discard pile. I'm going to put that on this Lugia in case I need it. And then I even have a Float Stone for later, but let's just go for an Intensifying Burn right now. Knock out the Lucario and hopefully get something to get another Lugia break a little bit later. And we get another Lugia and a Metal Energy. So you know what? I'm completely okay with that. My opponent goes into the Zygarde and okay. So... I think I'm just gonna try to target this guy down. Um, if he, so this'll do, he might be able to knock me out this turn. If he gets a Fighting Fury, no. If he gets a Fighting Fury Belt and an Energy, he knocks me out, or just a strong Energy, that does it too. Because I will, I'm down to 50 hit points, and yeah, that will be able to hit me for a whole lot of damage, but I do have a Lugia in the back that'll be able to hit this Zygarde for a ton as well. And then I can power up even another Lugia if I need to. So, I mean, I'm just in an absolutely phenomenal position. I have a Float Stone in hand if it comes down to that. So, I mean, I'm just really, really liking the position I'm in. Lugia has put me in an absolutely phenomenal position in this matchup and just, I have a one active, I have one powered up, ready to go on the bench if I can just draw a Lugia break. I mean, I've only played one, so I have three more somewhere else. And wait, did that not even, Wow, I forgot. Oh, that's right. I didn't count. I didn't bring pressure into this situation as well. I completely forgot about that. Oh, wow. You go Lugia. <laughs> you are you are too awesome. I'm just going to go ahead and get another energy onto Lugia on the bench and then, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and I could intensifying burn with another Lugia, but I think I just want to get damage on this uh Zygarde, keep my powered up 
Lugia in the background, and even if this one does go down, I will almost guaranteed be able to win next turn. That is just fine. You know what? This allows me to get rid of my Shaman. And that is why I run Skyfield, because as soon as my opponent counters my stadium, I can just immediately grab I can just immediately get rid of my Shaman. And now I have a perfect board setup. Two Bronzongs to be able to get back the energy from any attack that the Lugia break goes for. I have Zorak to rush in and well stand in and retreat. I mean, I, I just still am in the mindset of Keldeo in that spot. I mean, Keldeo would make this a lot easier, but Zorark does have the cool ability of being a backup attacker as well against decks that thrive on basics. I mean, to be fair, Lugia Break also completely shuts those down because, I mean, it's a break evolution. But okay, so it looks like my opponent is going to switch into this Psyguard and then going to not be able to knock out my Lugia, but I have a Lysander in my hand if I could get like a Lugia break off my top deck or something like that that would be phenomenal that way I could end this with a bang but I win no matter what this turn well hmm I, I don't think there's let me amend that statement I don't think there's a way my opponent can win unless he has like a red card or something like that but okay my opponent attaches the power memory to a Zygarde in the back that is, you know what, that's just fine with me. I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point. He does knock out the Lugia. Lugia, you did good. You did really, really good. So I'm just going to go into this one. Hopefully get a Lugia break. If not, no big deal. I get another Bronzor, but you know what? Let's just go ahead and end this. Go ahead and Lysander in that Zygarde. Go for an intensifying burn for the game with Lugia and Lugia break. So, I mean, this, whoo, that was a... That was a perfect, perfect match. I mean, Lugia just shined so, so brightly. Uh, it was able to show both regular Lugia and Lugia Break what it can do. Lugia against, well, regular Lugia against EX decks and Lugia Break just in general being able to hit extremely hard. And this deck, despite being a metal deck, is surprisingly consistent. And I urge you all to try it as especially, I mean, it's a pseudo budget deck. I say that because it only has two EXs. Well, I mean, it has three EXs in my build, but you you can do without the Age of Slash. So, I mean, it's only two EXs. Granted, those are the most expensive EXs in the game, but that's beside the point. Let's just go ahead and stick with the fact that it's two EXs. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Leave me any recommendations for decks that you want to see built, and I will get to them as soon as I can. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.